Welcome to Insights. And this week we are focusing on the soul and what is brutal to our soul in this culture. And so think of your soul this way. Think of it as a garden. And in that garden, either those leaves are green and it's producing vegetables and fruit and so forth, or they're wilting a, a bit, or they're turning brown. So how does it feel in your soul today? Now, recently I heard about these uh, Korean missionaries, obviously from South Korea, and they were here in the United States as missionaries. And I love that when other people from other countries come here to take the gospel further and to help the body of Christ grow and see the kingdom of God advance. But these missionaries left America because they said the pace of life was destroying their faith. And these are committed people. I've known some uh, Korean missionaries over the years and these are committed people. Um, and that got my attention. Well, it was just prior to this that I heard Christian author and speaker John Eldridge say that what is brutal to our soul is three things. He talked about the speed of life. Again, he talked about the rise of evil and he also talked about the barrage of the media. And doesn't that really sum it up in terms of things that bring this, our culture that's so unhealthy, meaning unhealthy for our soul, bring it into focus. And so here we are. And now I wanna give just a few pointers that have helped me, I think it can help us, but that these, uh, these pointers are, are in light of, yes, the, the now atmosphere in our culture and what's going on here in our country, but I believe it also has end times implications, which I'll get to at the very end. Okay, so first, just simply, I've been learning about saying no to busyness. And I've been like this for a number of years now where I just, I wake up in the morning or throughout my day and I tell the Lord, I refuse to be busy all the time. And I believe the Lord is pleased with that. He doesn't want us busy all the time. This is some strange American phenomenon where we have so much money and so many opportunities where at any moment we can pick five things we want to do or there's so much work opportunities and we just uh, dive into work and we're busy all the time. And this is not healthy for the soul. So first, I just say no to this busy lifestyle and I found this to be so helpful. Secondly, right now we are concluding 10 days of seeking the Lord, having a special season of 10 days of just going deep with the Lord. You might remember a few weeks ago I talked about this and it's a deep dive with the Lord and that's what we've been doing. And we only have a couple days left at this point, but I wanna say it's been so healthy for my soul basically to disengage as much as possible from daily life and daily routine and seek the Lord, whether it's prayer, reading the Bible, journaling, going on prayer walks, spending time with the Lord, enjoying creation. And one of the biggest themes of these 10 days has been simply to be getting together with other people in prayer, group prayer times that we've been doing every evening, some morning, some afternoons. But the point is, is really have set these days aside to seek the Lord and to not be in a hurry. And honestly, I don't think there's any other way we can get deep with the Lord. It just doesn't happen with one special praise night on a Friday night, although that's helpful. It doesn't happen only through morning quiet times, although that is helpful. But it happens through a real hard engagement when we seek the Lord with all of our hearts. He promises us he will be found. And I believe that this is so important in light of those three areas that John Eldridge identified. The speed of life, the rise of evil, and the barrage of the media. So how does all of this tie into the end times? In Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, it talks about 10 virgins. Five are prepared for the Lord's return. They have the oil on hand to burn the lamps and they're ready when Jesus comes and, and they're ready for the wedding feast. The other five virgins are not ready. This is all about the Holy Spirit. In Luke eleven thirteen, 13, Jesus promises us. He says in the context of prayer, at the longer passage, but he says, how much more will our heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And in Ephesians 5, 18, Paul says to be filled with the Spirit. So we need to be asking and filled. But here's my, my bigger point for today in terms of this oil and being ready for Jesus' second coming, being the five virgins that are ready. How we get this oil is by spending time with him, seeking him, and yes, asking the Holy Spirit to fill us on a daily basis, and along with that, being obedient to everything he shows us to do. That's the winning combination. 
But again, recognizing how much of culture is against us, it's, a, it's brutal against our soul, and yet how much provision that God will give us if we spend the time with him, not being busy all the time, setting certain seasons aside just to seek him. I look forward to being with you next week on Insights.